tell you what, there's adventures, and then there's this halfway across the Jurek. We're not even a fifth of the way through this track right now. This is epic! I don't think I've ever been so nervous before a four-wheel drive obstacle. If something goes wrong here, it's gonna be a strife. It's getting, it's getting a bit high. <laughs> this track will definitely, it'll test everything you've got. It's early season in the Kimberley. The water is high, the river's full of crocs, and the tracks will push four-wheel drives to their very limit. We're very remote in the Kimberley right now. This is sketchy as it gets. We're here to take on a once-in-a-lifetime mission, and that's to attempt to reopen one of Australia's most remote four-wheel drive tracks, the Umbulgari track. A single wet season can wipe this track off the map, but thanks to the global pandemic, it hasn't been driven in nearly two years. This is something we can't fix, so we're a bit of a pickle right now. Ahead of us lies 15 days off-grid and off the map, with no servos, no pubs, no phone reception and no resupply. <laughs> Heck of a lot to go yet. Uh, I, look, to be honest, this is real life. I don't know whether we're going to make it. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen here. There's only one way out, and that's to push through hundreds of kilometres of extreme low range as we try to put the Umbulgari track back on the map. Well, this is it, Graham. Very iconic moment, mate. Mate, I... I've done it a few times now and I still get a big smile on me dial. Crossing the Pentecost, how is it? Probably the single most iconic full drive picture ever. Mate, this is just wild and for us, our adventure begins right here. Sam, you must be pumped, mate. Your first time in the Kimberley. Couldn't be more excited, mate. This place is stunning. You're not wrong. And Rocket, mate, it's good to be back. Yeah, it's been a long two years, mate. I'll tell you what, I've missed you guys a lot. What better place to um, come and meet up again? Yeah, mate, and look, this time of year as well, I reckon we're going to have our work cut out. The Pentecost itself is a bucket list destination for many four-wheel drivers. But for us, this is just the road in to the start of our journey. For this trip, Sean's behind the wheel of his reborn Dirty 30 Mark II. I'm in the new Isuzu D-Max, which I've just fitted with 33-inch tyres. Tim and Harry from Mitz Alloy are wheeling a single cab 79, while Rocket's in his auto-converted cruiser, towing a Maverick Ranger forward-fold camper. But there's one more face in the convoy, our very own Nissan guru, Jesse Gleason, who somehow managed to swap the keys of Daryl for something a little more sophisticated in the Goodyear truck. Now look, the Umbulgari track is about as remote as any track gets, starting out of the back of Home Valley Station and winding its way over 500 kilometres through the heart of the Kimberley and all the way back to the dirt near Columbaroo. With the closest thing to civilization being the ruins of the former township of Umbulgari, our first objective, about 90 kilometers into this track. But first up, we've got to meet up with Ronnie. He and his family are the traditional owners of this area, and Ronnie's invited us to help him try and get the track open once again. What do you reckon, Ronnie? We're going to make it this year or a bit early? There's a couple of places I know that's going to give us trouble. It might be a game changer there, but... Yep. but I've uh, never seen so much water around this time of year, you know. It's... Yeah, and, well, we had a big wet, man, so yep. most of these crossing, I know them, but after a big wet, you always got to make new roads, yep. build stuff. Yep. Uh, this, this track will definitely, it'll test everything you've got. At last, after months of planning and a lot of sleepless nights waiting, we're finally pointing the rigs down the Umbulgari track. This track is driven by special permission only, and you won't see another person or vehicle from start to finish. Uh, I mean, where do you even start? Have a look at that view. Pentecost Ranges over there. The most remote part of Australia, in my humble opinion, the Kimberley region, especially this region we're going through right now. It's been six years since I was last in here, and this very track right here, the Umbulgari track with Ronnie was the reason the whole start of my career within the four-wheel drive industry, doing what I do today. I owe so much to this little patch of land, and I, <laughs> I'm so excited to be back up here. And it's funny the things you remember. You might be able to see it as I go past right now. That old international right there. I remember that from day one. Kimberley region, doing the trip again with the boys. Frothing, absolutely frothing. I'm as excited as a dog with two tails. Now let's just get into this.
What do we got here, Ronnie? Big salt flats, mate. Yeah, mate, this is the uh, Modiaca flats here, and in front of us, there'll be a little creek that we have to get by, so given that uh, we had a bit of higher tides, um, it'll make things much more interesting. You wouldn't want this to be wet when you cross it? Mate, a month ago this would be impossible, eh? This all would have been underwater. Lucky we uh, timed him right, eh? <laughs> this early in the season, driving these can be a risky undertaking, with sections of wet mud under the surface that can bury a vehicle. It's so muddy, you just go like, yeah, I've already put me tiny foot. bit off the, like, as soon as it's wet, it just goes, it's almost bottomless. We just got to get through, it's only about four or five metres, but it's a car length. There's nothing to inch off, as nothing. far as you can see. We need one car to at least make it over. We need a hero, that's what we need. Right, they send Ronnie through. I agree, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be interesting to watch. After a bit of deliberation, Ronnie's picked a likely looking spot to cross the creek. All I can say here, mate, is good luck. Well, I'll be done. I'll be done. Get into him. Winch him out of there. That's it. That's all she wrote, folks. I'll get you out, mate. You stay right there. Hey, a little milligan there. Hey? Water snake. What? They're very poisonous. Really? Yeah. All right, yeah, good. Thanks for stirring him up. Well, to be honest with you, that's actually a positive sign. I didn't think Ronnie was going to make it that far. Um, I'm, of course, up next. We've got to get him out first. He'll have another go. And I reckon he finds another gear with a little bit more right foot. I reckon he's got this. Here we go. Yeah. If you just give it a little bit more Nissan and a bit less Toyota. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Ronnie's got it in third gear now. And yes. this time, he's made it stick. Yes! That was hard in the mouth stuff. Oh, that's my line, nobody used that. Do what he did! Well, we've got a path of sorts now to follow, but the boot is going to have to be to the floor to make it through. Ah, yeah! Do you reckon I hit that? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a bit nervous. Well, that's about as much fun as you can have. <laughs> this is the first big challenge. Um, we're just keeping in the same sort of wheel tracks as Ronnie because he's sort of taken a lot of the slop out and it's actually a little bit of traction under there. Still gonna get heaps though to get through. Yeah, they said that's you'd never speed. make it, yeah, but you don't that's about it on 80 k's an hour. <laughs> they said you'd never make it, but he's done it on his own. Windows up. Tim and Harry are opting to follow the D Max's wheel tracks, and boom, easy. Easy. <laughs> yes. yes! Rocket's up next, mate. You've yep. got the camper trailer as well. Yeah, but it's an off-road camper and they wanted to test it. So we said, well, I bet you take it to them. Well, <laughs> it's going to get tested because this is the first of many challenges. Yep. A lot of mud, he's going to have to give it everything. And Rocket's ain't going to slow down. He's nah. going to have to break somewhere down there. Yep. I don't think the trailer's his problem. Stopping nah. could be his problem. <laughs> yeah, he's going to give so it how he goes. I'm going to get ready. Oh, get, get ready. Away, mate. Oh, he's coming for us. What's he doing? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah! Yes! Oh, he's done it! He's done it! And the good news is, the trailer's still attached. Excellent! Oh, oh, yes! Whoa. That's a go! That's it! That is the go. Well, we're at the point of no return now, boys. Onwards and upwards. Yeah, it really is. More bog holes. I don't, don't want to go back that way. No. Tell you what, this is so wild coming here this time of the year and to have the dirty 30 on these tracks, absolutely insane. I mean, I built this vehicle for this sort of stuff, for remote area travel. I wanted this vehicle to be able to do it all from drive hard tracks to come to places like this, which is as better as remote as you can get. And so far, 
Well, it's going insane. The Ombi track sees only a few four-wheel drives on a good year. But with COVID stopping all of Ronnie's tours last year, the track is exceptionally overgrown. With almost two years and two wet seasons since Ronnie's last visit, the first challenge is just finding the track. With the grass so tall, it literally swamps the vehicles. After a big day on the track, it's become clear that we're gonna have our work cut out to make it to Columbaroo. Last time we visited, we made it to the old town of Umbulgari in just a single day. But today, we've made it about a quarter of the way. And if we continue at this rate, we could be out here a heck of a lot longer than we planned. I gotta be honest though, I really couldn't be happier. Have a go with this scenery, mate. It's just getting better and better. This time of day, late afternoon in the Kimberley, I, I, I don't think there's a place like it in Australia. Just the colours that come alive out here. I know I'm sounding a bit romantic, but it's the photographer in me, mate. Well, mate, I reckon the best way we can sit down and appreciate it is um, maybe even might get a campsite. Start thinking about where to camp and maybe get a cold one. Ronnie's got the perfect spot for us just up ahead. But that's the beauty of this track. Anywhere you choose to pull up is practically the finest campsite you'll ever see. How good is this? This time of day in the Kimberley. We're just making camp. I love setting camp up the best of times, but the sun's setting in the Kimberley. Everything's gold. We're about to get a fire going. Of course, I'm going to get the fridge out, a couple of cold ones. I mean, it really doesn't get much better than this. All right, we're going to find out what we're going to have for dinner now. Because it's such a long trip, we've actually got a lot of meat cryovac in here. This is all turned to a freezer, so we're using the camper trailers, Mike Foreman as a freezer. Snaggers tonight, we've got everything in here. Yeah, that's for me too. We are going to be sorted. With camp set up and the fire cranking, it's safe to say this has been an epic start to our Kimberley adventure. I mean, look at this, colours in the sky. This is, this is Kimberley. Mate. Just day one, boys, yep. in for an absolute treat. Well, boys, I reckon that's it from me. I'm going to sit back and enjoy the fire. Cheers. Yeah, cheers to that, big fella. Coming up, we take on the wildest river crossing we've ever attempted. A raging, croc-infested river that could spell the end of our journey before it's even started. Overnight, we had an unexpected surprise from the skies, with rain bucketing down in the early hours of the morning. Aside from some wet canvas, that rain also suggests that the water level at the Jurak River is going to be extra high. And that could spell disaster for our plans to make it to Columbaroo. Last night, of course, it did rain a fair bit. It's muddy everywhere you walk, which is a little bit of a worry because we passed a big mud flat, so we can't exactly go back now. And um, Ronnie does tell us there's another big mud flat forward, so we're sort of stuck in a bit of a place. We just have to suck it and see. The good news is we get up over this mountain range. There is a river that I've marked on the GPS that I want to fish. There's a chance of a barramundi, and um, if all goes well tonight, um, the boys are going to be enjoying a Sean O cooked meal with barramundi. Or it's going to be chicken, one of the two. We'll see how we go today, eh? Been doing a few morning checks this morning. You're probably thinking, oh, he's checking his oil, checking his water and all that. No, I'm not. Checking for damage that Jocko might have done to the old D-Max. I'm glad to say he's actually not done too much to it. One thing he hasn't damaged at all is this brand new canopy up here. And there's a bit of a story behind this. This is what Timbo's calling from Mitts. He's calling the Evo 2. It's basically a concept canopy and he's just gone and put a whole heap of ideas into it. I'll tell you what, you can really see he's thinking. It's the small things that make such a difference. I mean, little things, little tiny things. I mean, you can put your sauce bottles upright in the drawer now. So when you slide the drawer back in, sauce bottles don't leak. Little things, I tell you. Have a look at this here. He's got two little grooves in the table so you can hang your rubbish bag. I know, small makes a huge difference. Come with me. Down in here, it's actually joined using rubber mounts so that he's been actually working with Fulcrum with regard to this. Rubber mount, so this whole thing is almost like a huge shock absorber on the back. Trundle tray's new design, I like the shape of it, but who cares what the shape is like if you're gonna get mud and water in here? Now, spares box have set me up with pretty much anything I need out here in case I break something. I've got hoses, belts, I've got everything. I've got oils, I've got brakes, I've got everything I could possibly need in here, air filters, the whole lot. It all fits in this trundle tray, which would be absolutely of no use to me at all if it got mud and water in here. It doesn't. Bone dry inside here. 
Massive fan. Come around here. Now, this here again, this is something Tim's really proud of. He's rejigged the entire hinge design on this door up here for two reasons. One, strength, but the other one is what I like about it. It bucketed down rain last night and I left my door open like a numpty that I am and no rain has got in here at all because what's happened is the rain's hit the roof, it's come down into this gutter here on the, on the edge of the roof and then all the rain's just run down these gutters here. A bag, everything inside here is bone dry. This is the kind of R&D I'm talking about and this is why Mitch Canopies are blowing my mind. Tim's out here living this, he's got an Evo on his truck as well and he's out here sniffing around my canopy every morning to make sure he's learning, seeing what needs to be changed. As far as I'm concerned, he's got it spot on. It's gonna be a cracking day boys, let's get into it. I can't wait to get into some of these challenges. The Umbi isn't just known for its water crossings. It's also full of these rocky, shaly hills that seem perfectly designed to puncture tyres and rattle teeth. And up ahead is our first creek crossing of the day. Salt water flows into this one, and with that comes the risk of big salties. There's no way we're walking this one. There's this Graham going. Oh, there's a big rock there, mate, big rock. Yeah, there's a section there that looks relatively deep. <laughs> it's a bit daunting going through. A creek that's as murky as this. I'm going to do my window up, and the main reason is I don't want a croc jumping in. Yeah. I, I, I like water crossings. They're one of my favourite four-wheel drive features to do. Oh, man, what is that over there? Something jumping out of the water. But I get a bit unnerved up here in the uh, Kimberley when it comes to water crossings because there's just so many boulders and bundies that you can get hung up on and snapping handbags. Oh, the rocks. <laughs> the D-Max has gone through there, I reckon, way smoother and Sean I made the dirty 30 look. And better, to the point, there's no teeth marks in the side of the door. <laughs> Come on, buddy. This is <laughs> epic. Very murky water. Very lizard feeling. A bit bumpy in there, Tim. Yeah, mate, she's bumpy. It's, as long as we get to the other side, I do not want to be stuck in here. It feels very crocky. It's a good opportunity to wash all that mud off from yesterday. With a full canopy and rooftop tent, Rocket's rig isn't exactly lightweight, and combined with a trailer loaded up with our food and water supplies, he's packing some weight. But so far, the big auto has been just cruising I through. I think I've done it. Soon enough, we're back into the long grass, and it's taking Ronnie every bit of knowledge he's got just to keep us on track. And with that in mind, Ronnie has asked the back of the convoy to start some early season grass burns to try and open things up. Fire has been a key part of indigenous land management for thousands of years, and burning early in the season stops big fires in the dry. It goes without saying though, do not try this at home, folks. I mentioned before that the rocky tracks here are pretty brutal on tyres. Well, the first victim of the day is the camper trailer. This terrain is just full of jagged little rocks. The problem is it's easy enough for the vehicle to sort of follow course, but then the trailer goes on a different line and just gets dragged over some of these rocks. So you've done a tire, we'll fix this one. Luckily we've got a couple of spares up our sleeve. It's an absolute definite that Rocket is the first person to open the Umbi with a camper trailer in tow. And the Maverick is definitely gonna be put through its paces. But with the spares easy to access on the back, we've soon got it up and running again. Stunning view out here that we've got to our right, the Jurak River down here, but like a lot of these really remote places up here, a little bit of a dark history to them. We don't really get talked about, doesn't really get mentioned too much, but I think it really deserves to be mentioned. This was actually the site of a large Aboriginal massacre many, many millions ago, and it was just an absolute atrocity. You know, Ronnie, Ronnie doesn't talk about it that much, and rightfully so, but yeah, there was a some real sorry business happened just down here off this cliff that I'm driving across right now, just above, up above the Jurak here. It's, Bit of that sort of Australian history that we sort of hide, we sort of put it in a bit of a closet and don't really talk about it, but it did happen and I think the more people that know about it, the more people that are educated about it, the better and avoid happening in the future. As we make it down off the ridge, the Jurak River is up ahead and I gotta say, it's looking pretty damn daunting. As the first people to attempt this crossing in two years, it really is anyone's guess how hard this will be. And while this water still looks fresh with last night's rain, the rapids to the right of us are fully tidal which means the level could go up or down in the next couple of hours. And of course, 
there could be some big crocs hiding under the surface. What do you reckon, Ron? She's bloody high. Yeah. Like, you know, I never crossed it like this. And this is all flood water too, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. This is all flood water. So, you know, I can see some of the rocks there. Yep. And it looks shallow, but those, you know, you got to remember those rocks are, they're uh, huge, big boulders, you know, so. And where the road goes is straight over to the sandbank over there. And on the other side, there's normally not that much water, so. Yeah, how deep is that deep. hole? Oh, it'd be pretty deep. Yeah, you go down on it. So what's the verdict? Well, I don't know if I can convince him of maybe to wait one more day. Yep. Camp it back up here, go down, do some fishing for tonight, then come back and reassess it. And so that's that's our option, you have to go barrow fishing? Yeah, that's it. If oh, bad. We can either do this or barrow fishing tonight. We're always up for a fish, of course, but there's good logic to Ronnie's plan. You see, the tide is still coming in and attempting the crossing this late in the day with the possibility of the water getting deeper is just simply not a smart move. The next low is due tomorrow morning and not only will that be the safest time to make the crossing, it'll give us another night to let the flood waters settle down a bit. But as we settle in for the afternoon for a little bit of fishing, there's a drama with the camera car that could spell a world of trouble. Camera crew have gone and done a bad thing. They've got to stick up through the radiator. They've totally cooked with the radiator. So what we're going to do is get this radiator out of here try and crimp it all up, put a bit of chemi weld on it, put an egg in there, um, and then let someone else drive the camera car. No, that's not true, that's not true. We're gonna try and fix it up while we're down here. We've got plenty of time. We're only a tenth of the way into this massive journey, and with daily temps in the high 30s, the GU is gonna struggle if we can't bush mechanic fix this radiator. Well, we've come up with a bit of a plan here, and it revolves around several large hammers, heaps of glue, some putty, and Rocket pretending he's a watchmaker. Not even kidding. So we're going to put, we're actually going to put glue up in this top part here where the holes are. Then we're going to use putty to repair the rest and then we're going to crimp these off. We've got the, the bottom end of the radiator facing up just a little bit. We're going to try and pour our concoction in here and then I'm going to knead it in for all the little gaps and everything. That fix is looking pretty promising so far, but we'll need to leave it overnight to cure before we try hook everything back up. When it rains, it pours. And Sean has just noticed a major leak under his rear diff. I suspect that I've hit a rock and it's just enough to have um, grabbed a bit of the gasket on the bottom of the diff here and actually pull it out. And it's just dripping constantly. So while the camera car is um, pulling the radiator out of that one, I'm gonna go and try and diagnose this. So I'm gonna capture my diff oil, which I'm gonna do with this. And then I'm gonna basically try and pry the center out of the diff housing a little bit, use some gasket glue, chuck it in there, clean it up first of course, see if I can't get it to seal properly. Well, so what I've done here, instead of um, pulling the axles out and taking the tail shaft off and doing it the long way to get the diff center out, what I've actually done is just taken all the nuts off and um, used a jack to go straight off the pinion here. That's separated, it's made a nice gap in between here where just make a makeshift gasket in there, put a fair bit in, close it all back up and hopefully it holds diff oil. That's the plan. Well, it might not be the perfect workshop, but it looks like Sean has managed to stop the leak, and that just leaves one thing, try and catch a barra. The waters around here are teeming with life, and rarely see a fisherman. Now, I've seen hooked a small shark, which is exactly what I'm not looking for. But later that night, things really got going. After a massive session, Sean bags a fish he's been dreaming of for years, a genuine metre barra. Guys, I don't know how to say this. This, if I can lift it, is the single biggest barrel I've ever seen, let alone caught. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> have, a, have a go at this, folks. This is so sick. That is, that's a metre plus every day of the week. Every day of the week. I'll get a measurement, but I'm gonna go back. It's a big girl. I am so stoked, it's not funny. Oh I dream God. about fish like this. I dream about it. The size of it is just enormous. I can't even hold it. I can't do this fish justice. That is a real one. Well done, mate. Of course, this one's over the allowed catch size, so she'll have to go back in the water. Something tells me I'm going to be hearing about this for a very long time. Yes! Yes! Yes!
In the morning light, the Durac is still looking pretty wild, but the water level has definitely receded a little overnight. The biggest concern though is not the depth, but the huge boulders hidden under the surface, just like these ones up on the bank. We've seen the damage they can cause already, and they've certainly also made for some interesting camping, requiring a few innovative solutions to stay comfortable. Sean has had some good luck last night and caught another barra that was within the allowed catch size, so he's got the ingredient he wanted for his next cookup. Well, have a go at that. That is, um, well, that's dinner tonight, that is. That's about a 70 centimetre barra. We got a real big one last night, which I'm very, very excited about my PB. Um, I'm running in this vehicle, fridge at the back here, and um, I've also got my fridge in the normal fridge space. I'm running two fridges plus all my camp lights. I've got a bit of a demand for 12 volt, as you can imagine. Now, because of the heat, and I'm talking about, you know, high 30s, 40 degrees every single day, puts a lot of stress on batteries. So you need to make sure that you can charge your batteries really quick. Considering that we're doing a lot of idling, a lot of low range stuff, it's not like those big highway drives where you can really charge your auxiliary batteries. So luckily, a few of us are running the Red Arc stuff. Now, all the Red Arc chargers do a great job of charging your batteries. But more importantly, I'm running Red Vision. The Camper Trail is running Red Vision as well. They are just foolproof because you can have a look at the screen, actually monitor how much battery you got left, how much charge is going into it. So you can actually work out your day to make sure by the end of the day, you're gonna have enough charge so you can run two fridges or your camp light and that sort of stuff. So I've woke up this morning, and I've still got about 40, 50%. So I know that by the time I get to camp tonight, I'm gonna have a full suite of batteries, plus my fridges are not gonna miss a beat. What do you reckon about that crossing over there? Like, look, I, I dead set think that it's dropped probably about half a foot overnight. Half a foot, well that's half of me. Yeah, look, so that's, that's, about, that's about a quarter of one of my barra, but <laughs> look what I'm getting out of here, I reckon we can cross, I reckon. Oh look, we're not gonna, not gonna know if we don't have a go at it. I think I might even go first. Yep. I might put the 30 down there first. Yep. Just the fact that it's probably lighter than a lot of these other vehicles, yep. twin locked, yep. Yep. anything goes pear shaped. Yep. I mean, it's only a Toyota at the end of the day. That's right, it's, it's an anchor, <laughs> more importantly for us, so we can get across. I'd love to be able to walk it, but it's just too much danger of crocodiles. What, what I'm hoping, and I don't know if this is science or not, but I'm hoping yeah. that when you go through, it's gonna disturb them and they're not gonna to wanna to come in. No, the noise I'll make, there's no gonna chance. Yeah, okay, so. I think first things first, we'll get that radiator back yep. in the camera car. Yep. Get all the cars mobile again, okay, and let's then do that. Okay. we go. All right, we'll get started on this. I reckon Rocket should quit the, uh, the, the automatics business and get into radiator repair, because that right there is, it's immaculate. Yep. Absolutely immaculate. Jesse might have thought he'd gotten away from Nissan's this trip, but no such luck, mate. Good news though, the radiator looks to be holding water, and so the camera crew might just be out of strife. Yes! Last job, of course, is to clear the crossing entry. And then we should be good to send our crash test dummy in. One Mr. Sean Whale. Track's open. Well, we're not game to walk the crossing, we're gonna take every precaution we can think of. And that means preparing a rear recovery option for the 30, as well as pre-spooling out the rumba in case Sean needs to do a forward recovery. Wow. I don't think I've ever been so nervous before a four-wheel drive obstacle. It's just you gotta imagine, like, obviously, deep water, fast flowing, but we're so remote, and miles from anywhere. If something goes wrong here, I'm gonna be in strife. Recovery gear's on the back, Ronnie's winch if I need to go back. If I'm at a point where I'm going forward, I guess it's up to me. All right, got speed, big boy. Another locker. All right, mate, here goes nothing. That's it. 
you can see right here, the pick and a clear path through is almost impossible. Every inch of this river is packed full of boulder after boulder. And if one gets stuck under your diffs, you could be in a world of hurt. As Sean picks his way towards the middle, the rocks are getting bigger and nastier. Suddenly, he looks like he's in trouble. This is not a place you want to get stuck, right in the deepest section of the river in full flow. But just like that, thank goodness he's free again, and thankfully on the move. You know things are serious when Shawno's not talking, and judging by the whites in his eyes, he's given it everything he's got. Not done yet. Let's have a look. Sean's made it to the last section of the river, which Ronnie reckons could be very deep. Speaking of which, he's making his way across as well. Yeah. Well, that was pretty nerve-wracking as hard to mount stuff. <laughs> You're not through it yet. Yeah. Oh, I can't it's even slow, speak. It's so, so close. close. Yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> well, I can't believe that just happened. Oh, boys! <laughs> that was holy heck! Sean and Ronnie are making it through, but not exactly making it look easy. And given these are two high clearance rigs with lockers engaged, this crossing is going to be a huge challenge for the rest of the convoy. Yeah, she's a tricky one, eh? Very slippery. Oh man, my heart was in my mouth, Ronnie. I'm not going to lie to you, mate. That was one of the loosest things I've ever done. Ronnie, you mad bugger, mate. Mate, that was awesome. That was... Oh, it was... One yeah. of the wildest things I've ever done. Well, that bit when I was stuck in there and I couldn't go forward, I tried to go back, but the rocks were so slippery that I couldn't turn my tyres. Yeah. And I was worried that a big boulder was going to get stuck into my diff and then that's me and done. That's it. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But I, lucky, I got lucky, I think, and just found a way through. Far yeah, out. That, good skills, buddy. Mate, that makes you feel alive, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, <laughs> man. After worrying about last night and yesterday and, you know, yeah. we did it. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm glad to be on this side, man. Oh, totally, mate, yeah. totally. <laughs> well, we'll get these other buggers through, eh? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> For those of us still on the other side, the nerves are still building after seeing Sean <laughs> nearly get swallowed in the river. All right, mate, I'm in position here. Um, what's your plan over there? Mate, the idea here is we're going to try and use uh, the big vehicle to get these two smaller vehicles through. So Timbo's going across in front, but he's going to stop at strategic spots where he feels comfortable, and then I'll attempt to get close to him. And the theory there being that if I get stuck, I can winch off the back of him without having to do some massive recovery right across the river. Yeah, good call. Well, right, that being the case, I might even just go out to that rock bar in between, so at least I'm on top of my hand. Yeah, solid. Yep. Now, while Tim's got plenty of clearance and 35s, the lockers have been playing up all trip, and the boys are going to have to attempt this one unlocked. It's not even hot, I'm just sweating with nerves. If it wasn't for that deep hole, I'd be frothing to go across. It's just that big deep hole, I don't want to get stuck in that. Good news is I can spot a bunch of rocks for you from here as well. shows just how much lockers help in situations like this. Tim has got the front diff caught up on a boulder, but with traction going to the wheel with least resistance on it, he's struggling to get free. Nah. I might have to pull you off that rock, mate. That wasn't pretty. 
Well, let's hope the crocs have been scared off already, eh? Because we're going in. Like the legend he is, Rocket is the first to jump in the water, and Jesse soon follows. Man, Tim is really stuck here. Radio, winching you. Yeah. Have a drive, have a drive. Drive, 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 drive. Slow it down, slow it down. There we go. Okay, take two. Hopefully the guys can find a better line. There we go, swing up. But it's a no-go, they're beached. Sounds pretty sick. Mate, we're thinking running a winch strap right out across to that tree to your part right. Get Jesse to grab an extension, I'll meet you. Oh, yeah, we got one. There's only one way we want to finish this track, and that's at the far end. So we're going to risk it and try and winch Tim forward through the river. And for Sean, that means the river crossing of his life. Just try not to look like crock bait, mate. So slippery. Throw the hook, throw the hook at me up, up here. Effort, Sean's dragged the winch back across the raging current and to the one likely looking tree on this stretch of water. Ooh. You ready? It's getting, it's getting a bit high. <laughs> it's higher on my side. The boys are. This is loose. If you can get that one to me. Put some line in. With the water Watch pulling it. the winch rope sideways, it's a heck of a struggle to get yeah, it hooked up. But fun. finally, it's done. Winching through a river, folks, you got to admit, that's not something you see every day. is moving boulders around into new positions that can hang up the next four wheel drive. But with a huge effort, we're getting Tim through to a good position to be a closer winch point if I need it. Look at Graham Cross. Woo! <laughs> yes. Let's give it a go, boys. I've got a factory diff lock in the D-Max that's really helping me navigate the boulders. And I'm feeling pretty good until I connect with a rock that fully that's catches him. under my diff. Yeah. Yep, I'm stuck. I was going to throw you the shackle, all right? Yeah, 
turning it, turning it. Yep, 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 yep. Soon enough, I've made it to the shallow section in the middle. Yeah, nice one, bro. All right, let's get rocket. Although I seem to have brought a fair bit of the river with me. All right, the plan it changed about four or five times, but this is the plan so far, and I think it's going to work a treat. <laughs> now, we're going to get Tim now over to the next sort of rock step, so then he, then Graham can winch off him, then we'll get rocket in Graham's place. We're just going to leapfrog the cars because you need somewhere to winch off, essentially. Yeah. And we've got the dirty 30 right at the back there. Yeah. So I think I think so, that'll work. Oh, that yeah, that's it. Hold it straight up. Straight up, mate. That's All right, it. let's give us a go. Give it a go. go. So I'm on a big rock. Graham's got a big one in front of him. I'm basically yeah. aiming for Harry. Yeah, yeah. You pretty much want to click Harry on your way through. Godspeed, Eddie. That's a bit of rolling momentum, bit of rolling momentum. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Tim's got the perfect line going here and he's gotten through that deep patch perfectly. But in all the excitement, he seems to have thrown the plan straight out the window. You baby go! Yeah, boy, that was sick! So the plan just changed a little bit. Tim was supposed to stop on that rock bar, but he got so excited. Sorry, I think I was meant to stop and uh, win. Graham. <laughs> <laughs> Far out. No, look, we don't blame you, Tim. <laughs> what about the plan? Oh, boy. You got me. I know I left you behind. I'm not going away. <laughs> I'll bring the 30 back over. Oh, someone owes me a couple of beers at the camp, so what? <laughs> With my anchor point now gone, thanks Tim, looks like Sean is going to have to get the 30 wet again. <laughs> thanks mate, owe you a beer. Well, I've got the 30 in position now. The boys are just hooking up the winch rope from the D-Max on the back of the 30. That way we've got two anchor points for Rocket and also Graham can winch through this bit if he does get stuck. That's pretty smooth sailing. So once we get Graham up in here and then Rocket again up to here, we are home and hose. Then we've got Jesse to worry about and the camera car. Actually, we've got a fair bit of work to do. <laughs> All right, are you all ready? I'm taking a different line, so we'll see what happens. Here he goes. There literally is no precedent for a camper trailer opening up the Umbi track at this time of year. Yeah, that's and to add to the challenge, challenge Rocket's off. also been having locker troubles and only has the front locked. And like the two cars in front of him, he's gotten caught up in the same spot. Oh, yeah, that's exactly where that Kenny got hung up. Yeah, stay in stay in I can't work out whether I'm stuck on the left or the right side of the car. I think it's right in the middle at the back by the looks of it. I reckon just probably winch just to play it safe if you don't want to cork through a tail shaft. Look at him staggering across. Look, Graham's gone. <laughs> We've now got a good chain of recovery going with a few vehicles spaced across the crossing. And soon we've got rocket hooked up and ready to winch. The camper itself is following along well and clearing the rocks. So it's not long till we've got rocket to the midpoint. Yeah, keep coming to that lock, that's good, that's good. Yep, that's perfect. Perfect, keep coming to that, keep coming. Keep coming, probably just a little bit more left there, swing a bit wider for the trailer. You want me to go forward? Straighten up a bit, Rocky. Kick arm, kick arm, kick arm, kick arm, kick arm, kick arm. You're doing spectacularly. This is classic rocket. Yep, I'll stop there. 
like every rock's an obstacle. It's like there's not a, it's like there's no flat ground in between any of these boulders. Now it's my turn again, and with a bit of leapfrogging, I've got the D Max up to the rock bar, making room for Jesse to jump in. That does not sound good already. Now Jesse spent quite a bit of time in the water quietly scoping a line and would you look at that, yeah. he's sailing through. That is a darn good drive mate. Hey, you know you time, mate. Well done. What did you stop for? I lost all my momentum. <laughs> Got cars in front of me mate. <laughs> Pretty soon we've got a recovery chain gang in full swing. And to save a bit of time, we've been putting the winches on free spool so the vehicle in front can continue it's without like unhooking. Unfortunately, stop, stop, that can stop, also stop. mean uh, running out of winch rope. Uh, bugger. Bugger. Well that's very unfortunate and a bad place for Rocket to not have a winch. But there's always plan B and that's to send the 30 in once again. every rock there is in the state of Western Australia so you can get across. Yeah, it worked well on the first, but I appreciate that, thank you. <laughs> With Rocket through safely, there's one more car to get through, and of course, that's the camera car. Yeah, beauty, keep it driving, keep it driving, keep it driving. Turn right, turn right, turn right, hard right, hard right. Hard right now, back hard left, hard left. And the boys look like they've nailed it. As Jesse heads into the second part of the crossing, Tim has hitched a lift, and once again, the plan seems to have been forgotten. Oh, 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 oh. I just wanted to let you know, I didn't have to reverse, boys. I was going to let you know. What about them? Oh, I did the exact same as Timmy. Yeah, Timmy. <laughs> that's, Timmy got in, so I just kept going. Gosh, Len. You got, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Shuey. Timmy was in here telling me, go, go, go. <laughs> I'll make it. I'll make it. Sure enough, they've nailed it. Nice one, lads. And with that, the Durak is behind us. And we truly are now on our own on the Umbulgari track, with the only route being forward and to the other side of this iconic Australian track. Before we head off, though, we're going to air up again and check that all the kit is still dry. Well, I think that's a water crossing, you'll all agree, not to be trifled with. In fact, probably, I would say, one of the most epic river crossings I've done. Just checking out the canopy here, not a drop of water in here, but the real test, the real test is down here. Let's have a look. This definitely went underwater, you saw it. Dust line, perfect. No water there. My gas bottles are bone dry. That is a success. <laughs> Well boys, that was nothing short of epic. I think I'm going to remember that crossing for a long, long time. Dude, try and name a more epic river crossing in Australia. I actually remember last time I came here, what, six years ago, we actually we didn't even know there was a river. You just drove straight over it. This time, absolutely incredible difference. Amazing. Enjoyed it.
Well, now we're past the Jurak. Um, Ronnie's going to take us to one of his uh, favourite little fishing spots, and he, he assures me that even you might stand a chance of catching a barra. Mate, ordinarily I'd have a smart com comeback with that, <laughs> but I think if you joined all my barra money together, they'd still be about as big as the lure you're using, so I, I've got nothing, mate. If I can catch a barra, I'll be stoked. I can't wait to get down there, mate, because if this spot wasn't epic enough, where we're going next, um, blow your socks off. I've heard the fish are so thick there, you've got to bait your hook behind a tree, mate. <laughs> It's a bit like that. I can't wait. Let's get down there. Now the Kimberley is jammed packed full of epic camping, but the secret little spot Ronnie is taking us to, well, <laughs> it'll blow your socks off. Would you have a look at that? What a place to roll out some canvas. It is simply magical. In the dry season, most of this water disappears and becomes a series of small barra-filled creeks. But right now, it's an inland ocean and quite simply, stunning. Camper soon sprung up and with the cold one in hand, we can reflect on a massive few days on the track. While Sean O tells us for the hundredth time about that barra he caught. And I swear, it's getting bigger every time you mention it, mate. But you know what? None of us are complaining because fresh barra is exactly what's on the menu for tonight. Well, how's this for a campsite? I mean, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again, every now and again, you get to come to a very special place and that's where we are tonight. So, of course, I need a special meal to, to sort of cut the mustard. I'm literally running this cooking show by myself because I've caught all the barra and the only barra we've got here tonight is the barra that I've caught. In fact, I've got the scars to prove it. We'll go into that later, but Graham, what are you doing here, mate? Hey, grab it a beer, mate. That's fair enough. Look, Rocket, he made two rules about this. Actually, one rule. There was one big rule. What was Rocket's rules? Don't make a mess on the kitchen. So that's I, a, I, that's I, decided, a valid rule. I decided I'd bring my cooker here. You're, you're a gentleman. So I wouldn't make a mess. Absolute but he didn't gentleman. say anything about stealing beers. No. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, Rocket. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Cheers, mate. Yeah, I've got cheers, out of there as well. I um, must say, cold, super cold. You have been the barra master of this trip. And what I, you know what you I've know what? Got I, lucky, you, I, I have. Here's the thing. What I've loved about this trip is when you can take a young fella under your under your wing, which I've done for the last ten or so years, and been able to pass down I some know, secrets. I know, I know. And to see you catch a good barra. I know, you right. must be a bit proud, Good eh? on you. you I really be a bit proud. It's like a father-son moment. Like, you, you don't get these from just uh, playing in the, in the shallow end, mate. Anyway, <laughs> look, look, look. What I want to do tonight You're is... looking at your arm with the tat. Cook, cook, sure. cook it a little, <laughs> bit of, little bit of barra up. But the thing is, mm. because I do all the hard lifting and all the heavy work around here, we don't have a stack of barra to go around, because I let the big girl go. I let yeah, her, yeah, as let, you should. I 55 her. and 80 in WA. Exactly right. Yep. I, I abided by the rules. Yep. And um, i got a beautiful little 70. 70. If I'm going to share that around the whole you crew... You need to bulk it out. Exactly right. So yeah. I'm going to do a yellow curry. Nice, chef. So now we need to raid Rocket Supplies, because I, he's got some frozen onion in this section of my corner. I can get that. I'm go in the pantry. Oh, yeah, look, oh, look what he's got in there. Hey, check that out. I know. That's some cool... Hey, you know what I like about that? The cutout, you can get into it. 
Exactly. That's oh, so I, easy. And everything stores in so there. So easy. Just, the, just in those two drawers, there's more storage than my whole dirty 30. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, first mm. things first, mate. Put a little bit of oil in the pan. So, so whack, a, whack a fair How few much? onions in. How oh, much? About half that. I've never dealt with this before. I know, a... oh, look, this is a funny thing because we knew we couldn't take fresh onions on this trip, so you know we what? decided we've got a fair few Mike Coleman fridges on this one. We so do. We've got freezers, we've got fridges, we've got, got all sorts of spots. But you put them all in, okay? <laughs> that's fair <laughs> enough. You basically get your curry paste like this, and I suggest, especially if you're doing a top end trip, get a couple of little curry paste because if 100%. you catch, look, if you're gonna do all the heavy lifting when it comes to fishing, then maybe you've got to feed like a whole crew of people. Well, sometimes you need a bit of a curry to make it work. Just. Is it, is the onions are making a cry. Yeah, or is that... just so <laughs> giant. Go in there. Go, go half that, half that, and then I'll put a bit. Oh, oh is that cricket well, in he's, there? He come back out. <laughs> yeah, he come back out. <laughs> well, he's, had a, he's had a good old curry mix. He likes it. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna put a bit of coconut milk. And what I basically want to do is I'm gonna yep. pour just like only. Ooh. Jesus, like it's, it's a lot of spillage. <laughs> oh, we will be in there, aren't we, mate? <laughs> we have, after this trip, we will be anyway. <laughs> that's cool. Look at that. Yeah, that's the happening. That's in there. happening. A little bit of garlic. Basically, two taps of the finger. Now you got to be careful with this. One, two. Let's go four. Yeah, you fair can't bit, go wrong with garlic. garlic really, in there. you can't. Let's go, a little bit of garlic. Oh, I wish you had smell of vision right now. That's not us not washing for a while. That is a, a yellow curry. Yeah, that, that is superb. You get all you get all that infused together. That's the word for you. Infused, in, infused yeah. together, and yeah. um, you're basically waiting for the oil to come back through the curry. Do you know what I love? And then you know it's on. You know what I love about cooking with you and your baduri? Yeah. So we've got a yellow curry going on here. Yeah. We put in some basic ingredients here. They're all light in colour. Yep. What's with the black things? What the? Wow, well, that would be the What in good God's name is that? If they're not bugs, they're probably from the last thing we cooked, I'd imagine. Um, <laughs> tiny bit of curry sausages in there. Look, if you've got a camp oven you love, it just keeps getting, every meal gets better. Yeah, it does. It, it just does. gets better and better and better. Now, after 15 years with this oven. <laughs> Has it been 15 years? It's been 15 years, mate. Nearly the day. Oh, there's a lot of bugs getting around. There's a lot of bugs. There's going to be a fair bit of protein in this meal, yep. I guarantee that. Hey, this is really hot. Should we turn it down? No, it's going good. That's good? going okay, good. Okay, no, okay. that's going good. Sorry, Chef. I'm just going to figure out what I'm doing next. <laughs> now, while I do that, sure. do you reckon you could put about, call it about a schoon glass of water in there? How's that looking? Yeah, really good. Is like, it? really good. Feel the like black one. thing's in here. Well, we stopped what scraping the? so hard. You're Heck scraping real hard. If you didn't scrape that hard, you, Dude. Wouldn't, you wouldn't find the bottom of the pan. The key what is, is to do, that? Use your wrist lightly, mate. That's why you're not catching as many barra. I just, do use my wrist lightly. Twitch, twitch, boom. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, <laughs> I do, but normally I don't have to. Oh. You're just in there, like, serving it. <laughs> like, like you're 15 again, mate. Just, just calm it right down. Slow and steady, you reckon? Yeah, okay, I think so. Sorry. Bit of brown sugar, bit of brown sugar. Just open her up. About two tablespoons of that if you can, if you can jam it out. Yeah, you gotta work your thumb in there. Yeah, you just massage it. That's it. it. That's it. Oh, yeah. It's like milk in a bull. It's pretty, very similar. You could have done that in the farm. <laughs> Dude, never. All right, mate. Well, I wanna go put the rice on, get yeah, that going. Copy that. You stir that. Yep. That's it. You better not be making a big mess over no, here. No, we're not making a mess, kitchen, Rocket. Right? Rocket. Will we're, 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 we be doing that? I cleaned this all this morning. <laughs> hey? Mate, there's, oh, there's look hard... at these. Where'd they come from? What? Oh, they... hey? I'm pretty sure they're mean? out of my fridge, mate. But thank you so much for the That's use right. of your trailer. No. I'll leave you to it. And the good thing about you guys being over here cooking is that you've left your fridge unattended. <laughs> <laughs> D-Max is closed. He can't get into the canopy of the D-Max. Yeah. Oh, there's a big moth in there. Yeah, get that one out. Get, get him out. out. How are you going with yeah, that? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Can we put something else in here beside <laughs> insects? Let's we're... get the barrier out. Let's yes. get the barrier out. All right. So. I've done, I've done a solid, and what I've actually done is I've skinned it, mm -hmm. and I've cut it down into small pieces. Where did you now, leave the skin? For, be honest. <laughs> I didn't realise at the time, but it was exactly underneath Graham's swag. And look, it's not, you it's left it's the skin. It's an honest mistake, mate. There's so, dingoes and saltwater crocodiles like 100 metres not that even way, 100, not and he left the skin outside my swag. <laughs> when you're looking for mates, it's 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 you vet, you vet them. No, on the, you on the, should. Yeah. You, you, you've mucked up somewhere along the Anyway, anyway, <laughs> anyway. All right, so what we got here is, this is dead set. I reckon there's a kilo. This is one barra. A solid This kilo. is about a 70 centimetre barra, just cut up into small pieces. Super. And you'll find that it actually goes a long way. I, I carry a bunch of Ziploc bags. Here's a little pro tip for you. If you're, like, like for instance, Gray would not need to carry these with him, but if you're likely to catch a couple of fish or something when you're out in the bush, 
grab yourself a couple of these Ziploc bags, mate, because when you fill them and stuff like yeah. that, you can jam them straight in the fridge. Is that right? And, um, you know, they, they don't take as much room when yep. you fill them. Yep, 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 yep. So, Oh, yeah, so so basically leave that. Don't even stir it anymore because Soz. what you want that to do, I'm going to put some veggies in with it. Oh, really? Real quick. Okay. Righto, mate, that is looking absolutely superb. Now, we put a few green beans in there. They're, they're frozen, of course. We've got uh, them out of course Rockets fridge. And yep. um, it's actually smelling, looking really good. The rice is cooked. Let's turn that off now. Man. Now, this is the exciting bit, though, because now you would have seen us run my Coolman fridges for a little while. A fair while. Now is your chance to win one, because we can give them one away. Simple as that, mate. I don't know how we get given that sort of power. I know, we to give no... a fridge away, because yeah. you guys watching can literally, you've got a really good chance of winning a 69 litre Mike what, Coleman fridge freezer. You've yep. got one of those. Yep. You've been, oh, I've actually had a quick look inside of there. You've got a little, you've got Shh. some good stuff in there. I've had it. Leave it alone. Anyway, anyway, if you want to win one, it's really as simple. Go into the comments below and yep. let us know what I should cook on the next episode. Can you make it halfway decent, folks? Seriously, and easy, because he's not. <laughs> <laughs> He's not Your quite all there. best camp meal. I want to see it in the comments below. Yep. Now, give me some instructions, a bit of inspiration. I'm going to go through and pick out one. I'm going to cook it. Yeah. But more importantly, you're going to win a 69 litre Mike Coleman fridge yep. freezer. Now, that's pretty good, isn't it? And don't just do curry sausages again, because I've had that no, 900 no, that's different my ways. Meal. That's yep. my meal. Your best, your best camp meal. That's Let it. us know in the comments below. And uh, you simple, win a fridge. Simple as that, isn't it? Easy way. Simple as that. I reckon we All get right. stuck into this, mate. We'll call the boys in. Well, boys, I'm gonna are do we rice ready? duty. Are we ready? I'm gonna do rice duty because that because there's a bit going on over here. All right, mate. Yeah, don't be don't be Listen, shy here. Should we just go like a ratio of how many barry you've caught, how much barry you get? Nick. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a way to make a barrel last. Mm. Big chunks of. Folks, if you've enjoyed this meal, let us know <laughs> how you could better it, or maybe you've got an idea of your own when it comes to bull herring in the southwest of WA, <laughs> because they taste way Cooked better than Barramundi. Let us know. In the Nullin up, up region. Exactly. <laughs> you can win yourself a Mike Coleman fridge for now. These jokers and I are going to go and sit mm. around the fire. They all owe me a beer Far because out. I've taught them how to catch barramundi over the last few years. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Sean. Mate. You've done yourself an That's actually not it's, bad. It's really good. That's actually good. Mm. You know what? It tastes even better when you call yourself. Far out. I'm right, so sick of hearing. <laughs> <laughs> There's serenity, and then there's this. I tell you what, folks, I say it all the time, but I really do mean it. Places like this are why we own a four-wheel drive. And I gotta tell you, it is so good to finally get the boys over to my side of the country. We're soon getting ready for our next day on the tracks, with a few running repairs on the go. Yesterday when we were driving, um, I could smell a little bit of coolant. I got out and actually tightened one of the hoses here that was just dripping a bit of coolant. It's not too bad. I feel like that overflow. Good practice, I suppose, to get into the habit of just checking over the vehicle. It's in the morning. I'm just going to put a little bit more water in there, just sort of compensate for what I lost yesterday, which wasn't much, and just have a general look over the vehicle. Everything's going really well. That's what I'm loving about this trip at the moment. There's the 30s performing really well, but that's pays to be on top of it. Just have a look and try and find the problems before they actually happen. That's the key, because when it does happen, sometimes it's too late. So far, we're only about day four into this adventure and it's an absolute epic. We've got another 
probably 10 days to go, about 600 k's of goat tracks, hardcore stuff. We don't even know what to expect. This is a really remote journey. Now, it's been a bit of a godsend having that camper trailer with us because we fit so much gear inside it. And um, as you can see in there, it's absolutely jam-packed full of spares. It's got a big fridge freezer running with all of our frozen cryovac meat. We've got so much gear in there that it just really pays to have that sort of space when you go on a trip like this. Well, this has sort of been the central hub of our camp setups. Every time we get to camp, we set the camper trailer up. Doesn't really take that long to set up. Slide the kitchen out, we've got a gas cooker, we've got heaps of storage. In fact, everyone in the convoy has sort of just been gathering around here to use the kitchen. It's so handy to have a kitchen. It's also got a couple of um, deep cycle batteries and a really good 12 volt system in there, which is essential because we're running a massive Mike Horman 90 litre uh, freezer. Both sides are set up as freezer. We're also carrying a stack of water. It's got a water tank on its own with about 100 litres of water. Um, just on a trip like this, you can't have too much space. Now, not to mention when you get inside, it's super comfortable. Now, Rocket's been sleeping in there and um, from what he's saying, he's living life in the big paddock. Now, you've probably seen us use this rack to put a bunch of swags on. You're probably thinking, why are we carrying so many swags on the camper trailer? All those swags are actually the camera crew. So we're just using every available square inch of space on this camper. And it's actually worked out really well for a big trip like this. But you know, take yourself out of a remote area touring situation like we're on and just go to a normal family camping situation. There's so much gear you need to take those little tin lids. And a camper trailer like this, I reckon, would be the perfect way just to take all that gear out bush and get the most of a place like this. Like so many camps in the Kimberley, we can happily park up for a week and just fish and explore. But the track is not going to reopen itself, so we're going to hit the road. First up though, Ronnie is going to try and find us a few deep water pockets to drop a line in. This right here is Nulla Nulla Creek, and while it's full of barra, it's also full of snapping handbags. Including this bad boy here that Ronnie reckons is about four metres in length and with none of us game to get too close to those reeds, all we manage is a few near misses. Yeah, you know what? I reckon we might leave this one to the crocs. Mate, we better get a uh, bit of a mile on. We've got a feral distance to go. Boys, I say we put heads down and just try and make a mile. We've got, uh, we've got a fair bit of catching up to do. Oh, wicked. Can't wait. Making a mile on the Umbulgari track turns out to be more difficult than it sounds. With the track being an unrelenting mix of rocky terrain and half hidden track. Soon we're stuck into another long jump up. With over five tonne of combined car and camper, Rocket has got his work cut out for him on this one. Seems I'm bottomed out. And despite a huge effort, he's eventually got to hop on the winch. A little bit more. Yes! <laughs> I got up a little bit. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Thanks for the 35 inch holes, Rod. <laughs> That's all right, I can't have you spoilt back there, young man. I don't know how to take it. One minute you're building the road for me, next minute you're digging it up. Very well done. Those sharp rocks have done a mischief though after the climb, and the camper trailer has done yet another tyre. Bit of a predicament here. Well, it's not a predicament yet, but it could turn into one. Rock has just done his second spare. Um, that one there. I can put my whole hand in that one. She ain't repairable. We're going to have a look at this one and see if it is repairable. He's been driving on it for a little while, so we'll see what happens. But that's it, he's down. If he gets one more, I'm caught on the chopper in. This is the last guy we need. This is it. This is weird. 
Yeah. Now, two tyres in 50 kilometres might seem like a lot, but let me tell you that this is just the start of what's going to be an ongoing puncture problem for the entire convoy. For now, we've got the Maverick back in action. We've soon got our heads down trying to get to our next waypoint of the trip, the ruins of Umbulgari. Like I said earlier, last time we made the run in a single day, but that was much later in the season. This time around, we're four days in and we've still got another massive river crossing and 30 k's left of low range driving before we get there. Not to mention the several hundred kilometres afterwards. And in the last light of day, another problem has popped up. And this time, it's Ronnie who's in trouble. That's supposed to be connected, but it's the rear universal joint on the front shaft is broken, but unfortunately it's taken out the flange with it completely, just sheared the flange off. So even though we have a new universal joint, there's very little we can do with it. So best thing, pull it out and continue in two wheel drive as far as we can. Now, this is a bit of a game changer. Ronnie knows this track better than anyone and getting him through in two wheel drive is gonna be an absolute mission. Well, we haven't even made our campsite today, no. the sun's just about to go down. Ronnie's come across on the radio, said metallic bad noise he underneath very the bad noise. got yep. underneath, tail shaft was hanging down. Not only did he break a uni, but also break the yoke as well. So that means that we've got spare unis. We do, which is weird, are... because we don't usually even take exactly. those, but this trip we're really prepared. <clears throat> yep. But this means that no matter what, we can't fix. You can't glue them on. You can't, mate. So basically what that means is that Ronnie's in two wheel drive from here on in, and we've still got probably a good three quarters of this track to go. More. <laughs> More than three quarters and of the track to go. We've also been told that it gets a heck of a lot harder from here. We've done the easy yeah. bit so far. We've so got Gila crossing, we've got a big jump up to go yet. We've got mud flats wet, to try and get through. Up there, yeah. the mud flats. Heck of a lot to go yet. Uh, I, look, to be honest, this is real life. I don't know whether we're going to make it. I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen here. But right, let's go get some tools out, eh? Just slow, isn't it? Well, folks, I tell you what, this is shaping up to be an even bigger adventure than any of us could have imagined. There's some sort of vague resemblance of a track right here. Yeah, this is right. this is next level. Join us next time as we fight to make it to Umbulgari and onwards into the depths of the Kimberley. As we lose the track, the track obviously isn't here for a long, hasn't been here for a long time, but lose tyres and even lose a vehicle. We're running very low on water. Yep. Tyres, well, we've got basically no spares between the whole group. Trust me, this adventure only gets better right here on Four Wheel Drive 24 7. Stick around, because coming up, it's the Four Wheel Drive outtakes. But first, let's take a look at the gear we rely on to get to places like this. Well, now's the time of the show where we're gonna sit back and go through some of the gear we've used to yep. make this trip possible. Now, one thing I'm absolutely loving mm -hmm. is a new rooftop tent. Now, yeah. this I've, I've used the Drifter rooftop tents a few times now, yep. but this one here comes with the little upgrades. Now, right. they don't sound like a big thing, but there's um, over center latches on it, which just makes, look, it makes the pack up about 35 seconds quicker. You and blink and you miss it, I must mate, admit. Anything yeah. about 35 seconds quicker, I'm all for. Me too, dude, me too. In fact, <laughs> it's got the eggshell mattress in there as well, yep. super comfy. Yep. I've just been up there every night, you open it all up, the breeze comes through, yep. and especially last night's camp, we had those yeah, views. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just incredible. The the only request I've got, no, actually, it's been going around the boys have all been saying it. Can yep. you just do the windows up when you go to bed at night? Because it's not a pretty sight. You just was it the crying or the, the shaking? It's the shaking. It's the, it, and the whole lot, mate. It's the whole piece together. Early days yet, mate. So going to get worse from here. I'll tell you what. <laughs> and one thing I'm very grateful of is that I've got the mid canopy on the back because I can get away from it a little bit. I've got my own little house there now. Timbo, of course, he has done so much work into that canopy. He's done. That's the new 
just a new prototype, but it's, it's like you were saying, little tiny things that make a huge difference. Like he's raised the floor up, so it's not sunken anymore. Mm. So when you bring things out, it's so much easier to get them in and out. Uh, it's modular as it's always been. He's actually been working with Fulcrum to make, this is a, a weird thing for a canopy, but the canopy's got shock absorbers. Yep. Little tiny shock absorbers really? on all the mounting points. Really? So it kind of moves independently of everything That's else. Pretty cool. It is the bomb, bro. Man, do you I'm know one thing I like about your canopy? What? It's actually, I don't know if it is, but it, it seems like it's a lot bigger because I've been putting a bit of my it stuff is. in there. It is. <laughs> <You, laughs> I know. I can't carry it all you in and mind. The, you and the film crew, it is. It's slightly bigger. It's, slightly, it's, it's everything. It's a bit more space in bit, there, bit which high, is cool. Yeah, it's everything. Yeah. It's, the, it's the bee's knees. Yeah. To trips like this, you've got to be comfortable. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like a rock star back there. Yeah, Without the groupies or the phone <laughs> or any of that. <laughs> but I'm like a rock star. <laughs> no, you've got to be comfortable when you're out bush, mate. Speaking of which, mm -hmm. how's those bison boots going? Well, I've hardly taken them off. Yeah. These were in a river a day ago. I was, I was a bit, I was wondering, like, you know, a trip like this is really hot up here. There's a lot yep. of water crossings. Will I be needing boots? It's so tough in the top end. Like, yep. everything will ruin your feet. Yep. And you get a cut in your foot day one. You're and done. You're out. Yep. So, look, I've been living in those things, basically. When I'm barra fishing, running through rivers with winch yep. ropes, even just, you know, just walking around day to day, those bison boots have been on my feet nearly all the time. And look, straight in, I had no problems wearing them in either. Yeah. They're super comfortable. They've got that gel insert too, which is really comfortable. Yep. And I was a bit concerned because they are steel cap. I thought yep. they'd be real heavy. My little chicken legs and carry them. Anyone can. Go, mate. I like that you've opted for the other, the heels option. So it gives you a little bit more. <laughs> I have got a little bit more height. <laughs> it's great. I'm allowed in the nightclub now. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're comfy, mate, and that's you know, good footwear, it is. essential when you're out in the bush. I agree. Well, right, folks, make sure you stick around, because coming up next, the outtakes. And I, I won't be in that. The, oh, there'll be a few, mate. We've got Not a little me. bit trop over the heat, so <laughs> grab your beer and maybe crack a new one. Who knows? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, me pluggers. <laughs> bush shoes, mate. The old bush boots. Don't worry about you that. You guys only drink lights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one who's What the hell? Sorry, mate. There's look, a lot I, of bugs. I, I, what are, look, there what are is. moth face like? Well, I'll tell you now. <laughs> Go on, Luke. <laughs> I'll eat it. <laughs> Crunchy, chewy. You got, you got to fill them first. <laughs> you can chewy. When they're this big, you got to fill them. Do you have a, yeah, so would you rather be down at Cops Island? Oh, Cops Island. Rocket on that one. Yeah. If we could do. Oh, yeah, yeah. 100% right. rather be at Cops. 100%. I love Coffs Harbour. Good. Good. Imagine having a barra tap in the Kimberley and catching barra. It's like you deserve it. Gonna have to drive this one. Just. Oh, Ronnie's stuck. But he's keep. He's got it. Cheapest creepers, Ron. That's not confidence building. Been three days driving in first gear yeah. low range. <laughs> You've gone a little bit crazy. Just a little bit stir crazy. I can't, I can't comment. No, you, you Whoa, what was oh, that? That was a bit of a pterodactyl. Oh my that goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. Hey, what do you need? Have you got a lighter? No, <laughs> I forgot a lighter. <laughs> Get out of there. There's a lot of bugs. There's a, there's a lot, lot of bugs. bugs. There's a lot of bugs. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> the professionals right, that we are. Right. This is what happens. What I'm a bit concerned about, I just don't know why you're cleaning it so often every night. Every night you go to bed, I hear you're cleaning it. Yeah, it's you weird. Gotta, that's, that's all that shaking that you hear up there. It's, it's very just, strange. Just me just sorting out the sheets. Well, and good just, on you. You gotta, you gotta keep your keep your, your, your apartment in uh, good, good, yeah. Depends on the real world. Really? You, you gotta, <laughs> these are the things you don't see behind the scenes. Yep. Dealing with dragonflies and yeah. moths and. Yeah, men yep. will be men. That's the thing, we'll get past this. Or we won't. <laughs> we'll see how we go. I'm quite the seaman. <laughs> <laughs> Not even weird. <laughs> you get them in weird places, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yep. But I'm professional to the core. I had one of those real buzzy vibrator ones yeah. that went straight. <laughs> no, it went straight up my shorts. Oh, not oh, wearing undies. Allow me. <laughs> Sauce. All right. <laughs> oh, what is that? Wow! 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 Look at that thing. Right up the snotter. You just got one right up there. Look at that thing. Wow! 
you think it's you're gonna be bracing. Rock it. Yeah. Is it are you serious? Rocket's got an impact the driver at the start. <laughs> oh, I was just trying to work out why it was so hard to get down and the car's been in four high. <laughs> Still got me throwing rock. Haven't used it yet. Push comes to shove though. I'll just let it go. I'll I'll just I'll throw it. If I have to throw this. Look out. I'm not afraid to use it. Just waiting for the time. Just waiting for the time.